Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication. I'd like to show you my Bible when that happened. Right here, between Malachi and Matthew, where the New Testament starts, there was a 400 year period gap in history between the two covenant books. And that's when it happened in the area of 160 BC. What was going on? Abominations by a would-be antichrist, anti-messiah, before the Messiah's time. Yeah, always somebody that wants to control, rule, and take over and destroy the things of God. Uh, yes, and so there was a statue put up in the temple to be worshipped in the place of God. Woo! Wow. It's called the Maccabean Revolt. The family of the Maccabeans revolted against the behavior that was going on in the temple. And so the dedication part is when they dedicated, rededicated the temple. It takes a whole week. And whether the lights are a, a true miracle or not, I don't know. But it, the, the uh, story goes that uh, the, the, light of, the oil lasted for one week. That's how long it takes to uh, cleanse the temple, dedicate it and renew it, and begin to use it again. So we asked what the Hanukkah menorah is for. It's a remembrance of that. The, the uh, regular menorah in the temple of God had, had seven branches. The um, uh, Hanukkah one has nine. So there's still the one in the middle and then the others. Interesting. So I'd like to go to uh, the book of John, chapter 10, and read a little bit for you. Now it was the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. Yeah, that's when it happened, winter. Feast of Dedication, the same words that the word Hanukkah is from. But what is so beautiful to me for, for this holiday, and it's not prescribed by God, it's not one of the festivals of God, is that the, they don't, not only did they de uh, dedicate the temple, cleanse it and purify it and make it right again, but the people dedicated themselves back to God to the practice of Judaism, to the worship of the Almighty. To me, that's the important part of Hanukkah. But now we're in the New Testament time when it says now it was uh, the feast of, uh, I'm in verse 22 in John 10. Feast of dedication in Jerusalem and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Solomon's porch is where the uh, outer edges where many people would gather. They, they had freedom to go into rooms and talk and teach. And, and, you know, he'd been in the temple teaching since he was 12 years old. So here he is in the temple once again at what? The Feast of Hanukkah. Yes, Jesus Yeshua celebrated Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. So that's why I celebrate it, because of him. And it's just another one of those times when the Jews were resurrected, well, not resurrected, rescued from a marauder, from people that were trying to destroy her, and certainly destroy the temple worship, which, by the way, it is destroyed now. There is no temple. One day there will be. There's one yet to come, that the Antichrist, another Antiochus Epiphanes with a new name, same spirit will come in and uh, do abominations in the temple. That one will be destroyed. And then God himself, Jesus, will build his own temple. Let me go on here. And then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, the Jews surrounded him. When the New Testament talks about the Jews, it means unbelieving Jews, those who denied Jesus' claim or his actions as being Messiah, the anointed one. So these Jews surrounded him and said to him, oh, they're not acting nice either. How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. 
Then Jesus answered them and said, I told you and you did not believe. You did not believe the works that I do in my Father's name. They bear witness to me. He's telling them right back the works that he has done. And you know, there were several things that only a Messiah could do and he fulfilled them all. And yet these men do not do not believe. And then, uh, then uh, Jesus goes on in this text. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Does Jesus Yeshua, Messiah, the Christ, know you? And do you follow him? And do you hear his voice? Many years ago, I had a friend that has nothing to do with Hanukkah, but it has to do with hearing God's voice. And she raised her children in Globe where the um, mines were. And they played on that refuse from the mine. And one of the three sons contracted a terrible cancer from the the stuff in the in the soil and he died he was 18 years old and he died from that terrible disease and his 15 year old brother was terrified that he too would end up the same way so he left the house one day and he ran out into a field running and his he heard a voice speak to him from the heavens john John, John, and he knew it was the Lord telling him, don't kill yourself. That young man heard the voice of God. Saul, <laughs> the, the one who persecuted Christianity and became the apostle Paul, heard a voice from, from the Lord too, and he said, Saul, Saul, why? Are you persecuting me? So the God, God has spoken in the New Testament times audibly to people. Not, I haven't heard it, but he speaks inside me. And sometimes I'm wrong in thinking it's God because it's probably me. Or it could be an enemy speaking to me. But we got to listen closely to hear his voice. You want to hear his voice. I know you do. Yeah, that's how intimate he is with us. Those that hear his voice are his sheep. Mm. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. God's not going to let anyone take you from him. You can walk away from him, but he won't let go. But when you want to walk away, he will let go. So hang on tight to him. My father has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. You can't, he, you can't, he's saying to the enemies and to the people, you Jews that don't believe, you can't snatch these believers away from me. You cannot snatch them from away from me. My father, Ooh, God hangs on to us tight. The only time he lets go is when we want it. But when we're struggling and we're trying to find him and we're trying to hear from him and we're trying to learn and grow in him, he hangs on to us tight. And this is the final word. This all happened on Hanukkah. Ah, it's not about lights and candles, but it's about the temple of God. He's in the temple teaching as he always did. This is the final word he says here. I and my father are one. One, echad in the Hebrew. One. Well, the Jews that were asking him, are you, tell us if you're the Messiah. They're really mad now. They're furious with him. They want to stone him. And, and he says to them, Many good works I have shown you from my father. 
but for which one of these good works are you stoning me? And they said back angrily, we don't stone you for good works. We stone you for blasphemy. You said you and God are one. That's my message from of Hanukkah. Dedicate yourself to the Lord, knowing that Jesus, Yeshua, the Father, Yehovah, are one. God bless you at this holiday season.